The first step into Freemasonry brings a man through a door that leads to a better path for his life. But there's a second door that opens into the whole new universe of opportunities that can be discovered through entering the Scottish Rite. I look at Masonry as a complete home. If you want to learn about it, know about it, and enjoy it, then you have to live in every room. Scottish Rite is a big, beautiful room in Masonry. You can't leave that door closed and think you're getting all of Masonry. You have to be able to experience the whole house. Not progressing beyond Blue Lodge is kind of like watching the first season of your favorite TV show and then not watching any of the following seasons. You miss the supporting characters that get added later. You get the extra plot twists that happen. Blue Lodge is like the place where you receive your bachelor's degree. For many Masons, they want more. They want new experiences. They want to continue that education. They want to seek further light. So they go to graduate college, and where you find that is the Scottish Rite. The Scottish Rite experience kind of took it above and beyond. It, it went to those 29 different degrees, and then beyond that. And it's those building blocks that built upon what I was given when I was made a Master Mason. When I became a Scottish Rite Mason, one of the first things that attracted me was working with larger groups of people. By the time I became Grand Master, I understood about the benefits of pulling people together toward a common goal and to see the results when those efforts were done successfully. And that became a tremendous building block for me as a Grand Master. So it was a direct result of Scottish Rite that had benefits on craft masonry in New Hampshire. Stuart Aronson is a former professional musician who went on to have a successful business career. When the Masonic home in Manchester was facing closure, he led the effort to save it. It began in 1904. Several of us thought, how can we close it without trying to fix it? I knew that there was a certain level of masonry that people expected to be brought to the business to bring to the forefront the ability to work together in teams that we learn in Scottish Rite as the operating model. And that's led to a great deal of our success there. And we have not only stabilized the business, but returned it into uh, black ink, if you will. As CEO, Stewart makes sure that the home stays in the black and that he takes care of the social and emotional needs of the residents. Using the interpersonal skills he honed in Scottish Rite, as well as his music. They love it. They love seeing that guy that's in the office come out of the office and do something totally different. There is no better part of the day than experiencing that joy with them. I went to the fall reunion held at the Valley of Uniontown. I liked the atmosphere that I encountered. I liked the degree work, and I was addicted right after that. On earth as it is in heaven. You never know where you're going to wind up in a Scottish Rite journey. You could be in an Arabian castle. You could be in a Civil War battlefield. You could be in Revolutionary War America. Jason Craig is a third-generation Mason. Though only 37 years old, he's achieved an impressive record of service to his lodge, his valley and other appendant bodies, and to his community. The Scottish Rite are very much dedicated to teaching you how to serve your fellow man and how to serve your community. That's worked out for me throughout my entire professional and volunteer life, being a volunteer firefighter, working as a paramedic on the ambulance service, and now I'm a simulation specialist for the West Virginia University Health Sciences Center. We have full body simulators. They blink, they cry, they sweat, they have blood pressures and pulses. And if the medical students or nursing students do what they're supposed to do, 
the mannequin gets better. If not, it gets worse. And it's up to me to take those mannequins apart and customize it however we need to to make sure that the, the simulation is as realistic as it can be for the learners. Okay, we can do it sideways and turn it down, which is exactly what the a ACLS video tells you to do. And the hard People assume that I have a master's degree or a PhD, but in reality, I actually never finished college. A lot of the things that I needed as far as the healthcare background and the technical background, I learned on the ambulance. But the public speaking, the attention to detail, the ability to plan, the ability to see the bigger picture, those were lessons that I learned in a Scottish Rite Freemasonry. It really is a leadership academy 101. Watching the blade go into the patient's mouth, avoid the If I hadn't joined Scottish Rite Freemasonry, I really have no idea what my life would be like. My job of teaching, the offices that I've held in so many different organizations, I don't think would have happened if I wouldn't have been given that chance of learning what it is to be a leader. Scottish Rite really has helped me build myself as an individual and has helped me to continue that Blue Lodge adventure I started nine years ago. I'm a much more attentive father. I spend a tremendous amount of time with my eight-year-old daughter. I spend more time trying to be a good husband. I think more about the relationships that I have in my life, and I enjoy the place that I'm at. Todd Creason works in the Technology Patent Department at the University of Illinois, but has found a greater satisfaction doing work outside of his workplace. Since I've been in the Scottish Rite, I've had an opportunity to use a lot of the other skills that I have. So I'm an accountant, but I'm a musician. I never really had an opportunity to use the music very much in my everyday life. Scottish Rite found a way to use that. I do music soundtracks for the degrees. And it's also given me an opportunity to write. The three books Todd has written about Freemasonry, as well as his three novels, all of which contain Masonic references, have provided a forum for him to represent the craft to the public. I was never a very good public speaker. As a matter of fact, it made me extremely nervous. Ten years ago, if you'd asked me to sit down and do an interview like this, it would have been impossible. First of all, I wouldn't have been able to do it. And second of all, I would have never agreed to do it. Since I've been in the Scottish Rite, I've had an opportunity to improve that skill considerably because I'm constantly out talking about my books, I'm talking about the fraternity, I'm doing past master's dinner, I'm talking about our blog. Todd was inspired to start writing by the wealth of historical artifacts he found in his 135-year-old lodge in Homer, Illinois. It wasn't long after I became a Mason that I realized that the lodges had stories to tell and I knew there's only a very small number of people that are ever going to hear those stories. It occurred to me right away the best way to do that is just to start telling those stories on a blog. Thanks to social media and blogging, we can bring all these old stories that are held within these lodges into the 21st century. Todd has assembled a group of 12 contributors, but continues to do a lot of the work himself, usually writing late at night. I always work from about 8 o'clock in the evening till sometime after midnight. So I started calling it the Midnight Freemason. Everybody thinks there is some deep Masonic meaning to it. There's not, <laughs> there's not. It's just the simple fact that a lot of the writers are hopeless insomniacs. We get emails from all over the world. Our favorite type of email is the one that says, I've been reading your blog for the last six months. How do I go about becoming a Freemason? Scottish Rite Masons are extremely active in the Blue Lodges. They understand the importance of the Blue Lodge. Without this Blue Lodge, none of the other stuff exists. So a lot of what Scottish Rite Masons do is to encourage, build, and invest in other Masons. Mark McGee is a seventh degree black belt in karate, is president of the Brunswick Bank, the director of the works for his valley, and is also a preacher at the Community of Christ Church. God's generosity calls people to worship. There's so much talk about the differences between masonry and religion. I can tell you right now, the Scottish Rite masonry has strengthened my faith. 
I've been able to talk to so many men, not of my faith. We all believe in that one similar God. And the message is very similar to the same messages we receive in the Rose Croix degree about loving one another, and that being the true one commandment. Direct us, O Lord, in all our doing. It's been roughly 15 years since I became a 32nd degree Mason, and every day I'm encouraged by what I've been taught, not to compete with others, but to compete with who I was yesterday. When I first joined the Scottish Rite, I didn't think there was much more I could be involved with. But then I started going to more and more events, and I wasn't having to give up anything else. I still could have a strong family and be involved in the Scottish Rite. I still could be a successful businessman and still be involved in the Scottish Rite. I still could serve my church and be involved in the Scottish Rite. It's allowed me to become successful in each and every one of them. And the valley for me has been an oasis where I can go away, talk with men who are going through the same thing I'm going through, share those common values, Amen. and then come back to my children refreshed, rejuvenated, and encouraged to be a better father, to be a better man. At our reunions, we'll have around 250 people. It's a lot of moving parts, a lot of handshaking, a lot of joking, teasing going on, a lot of friendships that are starting. A lot of friendships that are continuing, missing those who aren't there anymore, remembering those who were. Good to see you today. We're going to have candidates who are seeing what we're about for the first time. When they walk down the hall and are welcomed and told that they're the main reason we're there, there's a smile on their face that they know they're special, and we appreciate them and what they can do. That they're a part of the Scottish Rite family now. Good morning, brother. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. There are so many men who are dedicated to becoming a part of it, to making sure it continues beyond them, and that our Scottish Rite charities are also taken care of. With all that dedication and focus, nowhere to go but up and beyond. The key that opens the door to the joys and rewards of Scottish Rite Freemasonry is the same for these Masons as it is for every man who commits to taking this journey. The core values that lie at the heart of our experience as brothers in the ancient accepted Scottish Rite.